What is going on, beautiful people? I am Lee Hammack, the diagnosed self-aware narcissist known as Mental Illness, and welcome to another episode of the Narcissist Code. If this is your first time seeing my face or hearing my voice, I'm a diagnosed narcissist, and I use my platform to raise awareness for NPD, get more people into therapy, and also validate the victims and survivors of this disorder and these traits, a lot of these traits, too. You don't have to be a clinically diagnosed narcissist to be a toxic person, y'all. <clears throat> so... Today's episode is going to be about what happens to a narcissist when you go no contact, when you cut off the access, when you remove yourself permanently from the situation. So this could go a few different ways, y'all, and it really kind of depends on the type of person that you're dealing with, the type of narcissistic person that you're dealing with. So first off, all narcissists, this is me. I don't normally speak in absolutes. But this is one of the absolutes that I can speak in when I'm dealing with narcissistic people. All narcissists, not most, all narcissists hate rejection. And all narcissists deal with a lot of shame and things like that. So when you reject a narcissist, when you finally cut them off, when you finally cut off the contact and the access to yourself, that narcissistic person feels a lot of shame and, and, and rejection all bu bundled up into one. And when you cut off, when you go no contact, do it as safely as possible because some of these people, they become obsessive over you because narcissistic people think that it, immediately the way the where our minds go to when you go no contact is that you are trying to replace us, that you are replacing us because that's what we would do to you. If we go no contact with you, if we were to cut you off, we would immediately try to replace you. So that's where our mind, that's the first place our minds go to. When you go no contact with us, it's it, it, when you go no contact with a narcissist, it's just like, oh, my goodness, they're trying to replace me. Oh, my goodness. They're trying to find my replacement. And once they find my replacement, they won't need me anymore. And if they don't need me anymore, I'll go crazy. If I and I go crazy and like they like I said, y'all, if they don't need me anymore, I'll feel I'll feel super small. So, so I look protect yourself, y'all protect yourself at all costs, because I don't put anything past anyone. I've said that repeatedly when I talk when I talk about narcissistic people. When I talk about dealing with narcissists and toxic people. I don't put I don't put anything past anyone. One of the main statements that I hear from people when I'm talking to them over Zoom when they're dealing with narcissists and things like that is that I never thought they would do anything like that. I never expected them to do anything like that. Those statements run yeah. Those statements run through little little, 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 little narcissistic robot resetting. Those statements run through literally almost every single conversation that I have with somebody. It, it just does. I never thought they would do anything like this. I never expected that from them. So what I've learned is I don't put anything past anyone. I just don't do that, y'all. That's the, yeah. I just I just don't do that because I understand how narcissistic people's minds work. I understand the the dynamic of it because I'm a narcissist, y'all. I have the personality disorder. I don't just have the traits. Like Lee, I don't think you're narcissist because you do that, blah, 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 blah. y'all. I'm in therapy. I've been in therapy since 2000 to October 2017. I almost forgot. I almost forgot my timetable. My timetable on how long I've been in therapy. But narcissistic people, yeah, when you go no contact, it, like, I'm literally, that's where the mind goes to. It goes to, you're trying to replace me. And m most narcissists, or m probably all narcissists, y'all, feel like they are entitled to you. They feel like they feel a sense of ownership over you. Man, woman, non binary person, whoever they're dealing with and whoever they are. They feel a sense of entitlement and ownership over you. So how dare you cut me off? How dare you? That's the mindset right there. That's, that's where the mind goes to. You're trying to replace me. Then how dare you cut me off? So that's why they'll do every like going no contact, y'all, is going to be the best way to help you heal. But you know, in today's in today's society, in today's world, going no contact is hard as hell to do. Because if you change your number, like, yeah, you can block my phone number, you can block me on all kinds of social media, but guess what? If I, as long as I still know your phone number, I can create an, uh, I, I can go, I can change my number and text you and call you. I can get my friend's number to text and call you. I can blow up your friends and family, not, not literally explode them, but like blow up their phones, blow up their social media, ask them what's going on with you, ask them for the, you, for asking them to put you in contact, to have you call me, have you contact me. I'm just worried about them. Please let me, please, please have them contact me. I'm just worried about them. I haven't heard from them all day. You know what I mean? 
So when you go no contact, you have to cut out. Right, yeah, no contact means you have to let your friends and family know as well. Just like, look, I'm no longer talking to this person. I'm trying to get over this person. I'm trying to get past and get past, get I'm be done with this relationship. So if they contact you, do not tell them about me. Do not tell them where I am. Do not tell them what I'm doing and do not tell you do not give them like don't contact me on their behalf. You have to go like y'all. If you it's like it's literally like a leaky faucet. Going no contact with a narcissist is like damn near a, 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 having ru water running through a leaky faucet. You have to seal up all the leaks because if you don't seal up all the leaks, it's going to drip, 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 drip. And you know if it drip if you if it drips long enough, it's going to make a hole. If it drips long enough, it's going to do some damage. So you have to plug up all the leaks, all the social media leaks, all the mutual friend leaks, all of it. You damn near have to go. You damn near have to go off the grid. And I tell this to people sometimes: when you go no contact, you might have to change your phone number. But don't. But don't. But don't. But don't. I'm repeating myself, y'all. This the, the the audio is not skipping. This is me repeating myself because I need to drill into your damn heads. But don't give them your damn phone number. If you change your number, don't text them. Don't. Break. I know. I know people do it, but don't. I know it's easier said than done, but don't do it because it's pointless to change your number then. Don't change your number if you're going to give in and give it to them. If you're going to give in and contact them because that defeats the purpose. You just made your own life harder because you couldn't take like because you decided to break no contact. Don't break no contact. I know it's different if you have kids. You have to go as low contact as possible. And sometimes like, well, how do I go no contact if I have kids? Sometimes you have to use parenting apps because it's, you, sometimes you have to talk to them, y'all. It's just the way of the world. Sometimes you have to talk to them. Medical decisions, things like that. Sometimes you have to talk to them. So go, if, you, if you do not have kids by narcissists, don't have them right now. Yeah, I'm just telling you. Kids won't fix your relationship with this toxic-ass person. Kids won't fix this toxic relationship. You, 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 kids can't fix it. They won't fix it. It actually, actually makes it worse because now you can't, you can't. You have to have a reason to contact you now. Kids are forever. This is not an 18 year, 18 year endeavor. This is forever. I be feeling like y'all be having kids and think like, oh, 18 years and it's done. No, when that kid is grown and has their own family and things like that, they're going to have to decide whose house to go to for Thanksgiving and Christmas and other holidays and things like that. If you're not Christian, what are you going to do then? Oh, I thought it was 18 years. Nope. Oh, I'm, hey, mom, I'm going to dad's house. You're going to that toxic narcissistic bastard's house? Not me. Yeah, you thought it was 18 years, didn't you? Nope. So if you don't have kids by narcissists, don't have them, y'all. They're not going to fix anything. Don't break no contact and let them clap your cheeks and put a baby in you. Or don't let them come over there and hop on top of you and you put a baby in them. You know what I mean? It just I'm just telling you, don't do it. Because the going no contact is the strongest way to help you heal. No contact is for you. It's not to punish them. It's not to hurt them. I know you want to hurt them and whatnot because you how, how dare they get, to, get away with the things that they have done to you. I know you want to hurt them. But sometimes you just want to heal. No contact is the strongest way, the best way for you to heal because you can you cannot fully heal in the same environment that made you sick. In this contacting environment, contacting the source of your hurt and pain cannot help you heal. Y'all, it just won't help you heal. How does that make sense? It's like, you know, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant when it when it melted down, the people who got away healed. If you set in that toxic radiation, guess what? You got sick. But the further away you got away from the nuclear meltdown, the better you felt, the more, the better your chances were. Get out of Chernobyl. That narcissistic relationship is Chernobyl. It's a nuclear power plant ready to melt down and destroy your life. Because the longer you stay in the toxicity, the worse you feel. You might grow a different limb. You mean you become someone totally different. You mutate. Actually, that's a good analogy, because the longer you stay in the toxic radiation, the, the, the toxic radiation of this narcissistic toxic relationship, the more you mutate yourself maybe not physically a lot of times you gain weight you lose weight you get stressed you get older you're gray hairs you know what I mean you get you get physically sick but a lot of times the, the mutation is going to be mentally and emotionally you have emotional mutations and things like that you have mental mutations the longer you stay in this toxic environment the more you're going to mutate yourself so no contact get in the way cutting off the access is the best way for you to heal it's not to punish them it's to help you heal it's like working out. The longer you stay no contact, the easier it gets. Day one, no contact. You can be shaking and sh shaking and shivering. And that's when, it, look, at the beginning, when a narcissist is going to try the hardest. Day one, they beat. They might pop up at your damn house. Day two, they might pop up at your job. Do not break no contact. 
Just keep swimming. What did I say? Just keep swimming. Just like Dory. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Because if you stop swimming, if you stop swimming, if you break no contact, you go back over there to the jellyfish and get your ass stung. Stop. Because narcissistic people, they're going through it. They're pulling their hair out because they think you're going to replace them. They think they know the longer you're away from them, the more likely you are to replace them. And that drives narcissistic people crazy. They cannot stand the thought of you thinking you're going to replace them. They just cannot do that, y'all. We cannot do that. I remember my wife left me. That's the first thing. How do you know that's narcissist's first thought? Because my wife left me. I, thought, I just knew. Then she's like, I'm moving out. I'm like, oh, she's moving out with another man. That's, my first, that's the first place my mind went to, y'all. I be feeling like people, yeah, y'all think, yeah, I'm still a narcissist. I'm just working on myself. You know, I'm just bettering myself every single day. You know me. I'm just altering my behaviors every single day. I'm putting me in the work to alter my behaviors, to live a better existence. But yeah, my thoughts went right to that. I thought you know, I was ashamed. I, I felt rejected. And I damn sure thought she was trying to replace me because that's what I would do. That's what most narcissists would do. If you, if we are, if we are leaving you alone, that means we're trying to hook up with somebody else. If we are emotionally disconnecting from you, that means we're emotionally trying to connect to someone else, to some other people. You know what I mean? Our thoughts, we, we, we project our thoughts onto you. What we would do, we think you're going to do it because the world revolves around us, doesn't it? You see how that, you see how that works? So narcissists are going to be, they can become obsessive. They can become very, very dangerous when you go no contact. So I tell people all the time, protect yourself. Whatever protecting yourself looks like. If you got to arm yourself, if you got to prepare to protect yourself, because some people, narcissistic people, when they're backed into a corner, you, they they like honey badgers. They may come out tight, attacking and biting and scratching and fighting and clawing for their life or their livelihoods, their existences. But anyways, y'all, thank y'all for tuning in to another episode. I got to cut this thing short. I'm going to book the event space right now for the July 23rd meetup live in person in Durham, North Carolina at the Honeysuckle at Lakewood in Durham, North Carolina, 3 p.m. Uh, until 6, 7 p.m., whatever. I'm going to find it out today. So come through. Stay tuned. Like and subscribe. Mental Live in person meetup. Mental illness is out. Peace.